Okay, so you guys are all welcome once again to this morning's lesson. Um, I'm sure you'll be wondering, a Greek at this time, and I hope you remember that you did a Greek in DHS. A Greek is an integral part of the integrated science, and uh, it's very important for us to, to know a Greek. Because everything we eat and drink is coming from a Greek. And I know a number of you, either yourselves or your parents, keep backyard gardens or are real farmers by profession. And so it's important for us to, um, to, to, to know what we are doing. Then, of course, Agric is also a very lucrative um, job opportunity that um, 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 that can offer us our our um, um, income. So today I want us to start off quickly. All right, pay attention and, and let's start. Okay, so for today, we shall be looking at an introduction, a brief introduction to our Greek. We shall look at the importance of agriculture, and then quickly we'll delve into some of the uh, farming systems that are practiced in Ghana. All right? So I hope that at the end of this lesson, you should understand what agriculture is as a science and as an art, then you should be able to appreciate the importance of a Greek, what, how important a Greek is to you as an individual, as a, a, to us as a community and then a, a, a nation at large. Then you should be able to recall as many of the farming systems as you can and telling us what advantages and disadvantages each of them has. All right. So let's go straight into our lesson. Okay. What is agriculture? Of course, agriculture is the oldest occupation known to human civilization. Well, it's, it's, it developed as humans evolved, and it is the one stop source of food for jobs for most humans everywhere across the world. In Ghana, agriculture contributes about 55% of uh, uh, the national gross domestic product, which is uh, uh, the, the, the total amount of the money that the country has. It is the fourth um, foreign exchange earner for the country. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, on, it's, it supplies more than 90% of all the food that we eat. The study of and the effective implementation of agri policies are very important in sustaining and, of course, advancing our uh, economic growth. What is agriculture? It is the science that studies cultivation of plants and the rearing of animals to satisfy human needs. The studies, the science that studies the cultivation of plants and rearing of farm animals to 
satisfy human needs. It is also an art and science of producing crops and animals for human use. So, um, learning to grow crops and rare animals for human use is called agriculture. And of course, practicing what you have learned in itself is also agriculture. So agriculture is one learning, then of course, uh, implementing or applying what you have learned to produce food crops and uh, animal products that we um, um, that we all we all uh, need. What is modern agriculture? It is the application of science and technology, all right, in raising farm animals and growing crops to feed human societies. So you will see that even in our economy in Ghana, we have a ministry responsible for agriculture. Agriculture is that important because without agriculture, we cannot drink or eat anything. Everything that we eat or drink comes from agriculture comes from plants and animal sources. And plants and animal sources are raised from agriculture. All right, let's move on. And look at some of the farming systems that we have in Ghana. Now, what is a farming system or what are farming systems? These are the ways by which farming activities are carried out, all right? The ways by which the farmer will manage the farm is known as the farming system. There are many, many, many ways of handling or managing farms. Some farmers would grow one crop at a time. Some others would also grow different crops on the same field at the same time. Some farmers will rear only animals. Some, anim some farmers will also combine animals with crops on the same yeah. farm. Yes, who is calling? Yeah. We're also taking notes. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, <clears throat> in Ghana, some of the um, farming systems we have include um, land rotation, mixed cropping, crop rotation, monocropping, shifting cultivation, pastoral farming, mixed cropping, monoculture, organic farming, and so on and so forth. In the next few minutes, I shall take my time to explain to you each of these farming systems, citing their advantages and disadvantages to you. So I need you to pay rapt attention while we go on. All right, the first one I want us to look at is shifting cultivation. Now, in shifting cultivation, a piece of land is cultivated for some time and then is left for another farmland without the farmer returning to the former land. Do you understand that? So we cultivate a piece of land for some time, then we leave it and never return to it. That is called shifting cultivation, all right? Now, the farmer will go or will leave the new farm, the, the farm location together with his uh, uh, properties, including his wives, or let me say his family and the uh, head of cattle and every other thing that he has, and then goes to settle at another location and usually will not return to this previous location. Now, there are many reasons why uh, the farmer would want to migrate and leave. Sometimes it's just because the land is there and he wants to explore. But sometimes too, it's because there are adverse weather conditions, um, there are some uncontrollable diseases, or sometimes to the feed for the uh, head of cattle or other animals that are being raised are not available. So he has to explore other avenues. That's why sometimes 
um, the farmer would, would, would migrate or desert his farm completely. Now, what is the advantage for this? The land that is left usually will regain its fertility because it is allowed to fallow. Now, fallow period is that period when the land is not in use for any agricultural activity. So it's left there to, to rest. Let me say, so fallow period is just like a resting period. Now, what is the, what is the disadvantage for this? A, the, the major disadvantage is that it's, it, it wastes land resources because you, you have one piece of land, you leave it, go to another piece of land, you leave it, go to another piece of land, you leave it. It, it, is, it is very, very, it consumes land so much. And so in our day to day, it is not even practiced. It, it, this was done way, way, way back several thousands of years ago when human population was not as much as it is today all right it also leads to deforestation because before you use any piece of land for farm you need to clear the land and so it makes it it, it makes you it makes the farmer to clear virgin forests all right so i have a diagram here to explain to you you see what we have the primary or secondary forest that's where to begin with after that, this forest is cut down and burned, all right? Then the, uh, 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 there is an annual harvest after the cultivation. Now, after cultivation for some time, um, then a secondary vegetation will start to develop because at, after harvest, the land will be left to rest for some time, all right? Then either it is cut again and burned, then the process continuous in this cycle, or it is left and never returned to, then it becomes a secondary forest. Then the whole cycle continues again. So that is that about uh, shifting cultivation. Now let's come to land rotation. Land rotation, let me tell you, is just like the shifting cultivation, except that in this case, the farmer will return to the farm after the, the, the land has gained its fertility. This is what happens. The farmer cultivates this piece of land. After some time, he leaves it and goes to another piece of land, but returns to it after the land that has been left first regains its fertility okay so it's a system of farming whereby a farmer leaves a piece of land cultivated a piece of land that has lost its fertility but returns to it after it has regained its fertility the piece of land is usually cultivated for six years and then left to follow for about a year and then returned to afterwards so the difference between this and the uh, shifting cultivation is that over here in land rotation, the farmer returns to the farm. Now, what are the advantages of this system of farming? The land regains its lost nutrients after the fallow period. Now, it also helps to check the spread of pests and diseases. Now, because the land is left to, to rest for some time, if the pests that attack the crops are there, they will not be able to, to survive because the crops are not there at the time the land is left bare to rest. I hope you understand that. Then, of course, let's look at the disadvantages of this. This farming system needs a lot of time and work because you need to be monitoring whether or not the land is losing the nutrients, all right? And that's how you go to know, or that's how you go to uh, determine whether the nutrients are okay or not before you leave, okay? So it's, it's, it needs some skill to, to be able to determine that. Then of course, because you are moving from one land to another, the virgin forest on the other land will be destroyed, all right? Then of course, it doesn't, encourage large scale farming. Imagine that you want to do about 100 acres of maize farm on one piece of land 
then the next few years you will leave the whole 100 acre farm and go to another hand no we don't have that much land in our day to day and so it will not encourage large scale farming if you are doing a small scale farming maybe a few maybe one acre or half an acre you can do that but if you want to do large scale farming uh, uh, this will not permit you all right let's move on and look at the next one which is mixed farming now as the name suggests mixed farming means that you are growing both and uh, both uh, plants and rearing animals on the same piece of land in this picture you see cattle resting over here and a piece of land where we have maize also growing at the same time that is what we call mixed farming so in mixed farming the farmer produces both animals and crops on the same piece of land at the same time take note at the same time all right what are the advantages of this system of farming the land and laborers are efficiently utilized because we have one acre of land we can use it for farm uh, for crop production at the same time animal production that means that we are utilizing or we are making the best of the land and of course the laborers available will be working on the farm on the animal farm and the crop farm at the same time so you don't have to go and pay somebody to come and work on the crop farm and another person to work on the uh, um, animal farm at different locations at different times i hope you understand that then of course animals feed on crop residues and the plants also need animals droppings for manure to grow well i hope that makes a that makes a lot of sense to you that the animals will feed on the plant uh, on the plant parts whereas the droppings from the uh, uh, from the animals will also uh, uh, serve as fertilizer or manure for the plants to grow well for the farmer can use the animals to help in some of the farm work such as plowing if you go to some parts of our country especially the northern parts you will see cattle being used on farmlands to do plowing once you yoke two cattle together they can you know plow an entire farmland for you so that is very advantageous to do a uh, mixed farming what are the disadvantages of this system of farming the farmer works throughout the year without rest i hope you would agree with me that if today he is on the animal farm tomorrow he is on the crop farm and so on and so forth so there there's always work on the farm at all times and if you are not resting then we have a problem the animals can destroy the crops when they are not well kept of course even from the picture i tell i show you over here if the, you see that there are people over there there are laborers over there one about four of them uh, overseeing the animals and I, I probably checking them from entering the the crop farm so if this if, if care is not taken the animals will just um, enter the crop farm and eat up everything the farmer needs a lot of skills to handle both animals and crops properly and if you're not that skillful then you'll be losing either the crops or the animals or both of them at the same time and that is very bad for your for your business as a farmer all right then i have a picture for you like a flow chart to tell you the advantages of the this thing of the of this type of farming so you have livestock production now the animals in agri are called livestock all right so they will eat the plant parts they will eat the plant parts and then uh, cycle the nutrients which will be used by the crops all right then the crops will grow and produce leaves and other parts that the animal will eat all right then this becomes the crop residues which the livestock will also feed on i hope you understand that so again mixed farming can be called integrated crop livestock farming all right okay let's go on shall we let's look at crop rotation now crop rotation has to do with 
growing different types of crops on the same piece of land in succession. So in a definite order, one after one, one in one season you grow one type of crop, then another the following season you grow another crop crop, the following season you grow another crop. All right. So the farm is divided into several plots and the crops which are grown are moved from plot to plot each year. All right. In fact, this system is one of the surest ways of preserving the fertility of the soil. It is very, very efficient. Now, I have a picture of the plot or shadow for you. Maybe in the first year, we we zone our piece of land into four plots. So we have plot A, plot B, plot C, and plot D. On plot A, we have cassava. On plot B, we have a legume, say ground nut. Then plant, uh, plot C, we have a uh, yam. Then we allow plot D to follow, even though you can start also with another crop. All right? So, we are coming to rotate this with over a period of four years. So on plot A, the second year, we'll bring the groundnut <coughs> to plot A. Then we'll bring tomato, which was on the plot, which, was, uh, which is probably was coming from the followed plot D land, right? Then on plot C, we shall follow it. We will not grow anything. We will let it to you know to follow to rest for the next year. Then plot D will now have millet. Then plot A will have plot A on the third in the third year we will grow millet, and then we will allow plot B to follow or to rest. Then plot C will now take cassava, and then plot D will take millet again. In the fourth year, in the fourth year, plot A will now be made to rest. Then we'll have millet to grow on plot B. Then we'll grow a, a granite on plot C. Then we'll grow yam on the plot D. Now this is also called rotational farming or crop rotation. I, I asked, I, I, it's there on the screen for you to see. Now, what are the advantages of this process? I told you it is the surest way to preserve the soil facility. Because one, it controls soil erosion. Now you see that um, there are, there's a legume, I mentioned groundnut, which is, which is incorporated in the system. This is, this is because the legume has the ability to hold the soil surface together, all right? Now, if you have crops that are holding the soil surface together, then you are preventing erosion from occurring. Then, of course, it maintains soil fertility. Again, the legume is able to fix nitrogen, atmospheric nitrogen, into the soil. Once nitrogen is fixed into the soil, we are enhancing the, 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 the fertility of the soil. Then again, it ensures an effective use of labor. Like we saw in the mixed cropping, whoever is employed as a laborer on the farm will work on all four plots at the time. All right, so you don't have to employ another set of laborers for cassava, another set of laborers for legume, for yam, and uh, for millet in the same year. A set, a one set of laborers can work on the same farm at the same time. All right, then of course it helps to control. Uh, uh, pests and diseases because the crops are rotated. Bear in mind that the, the pests and diseases that attack cassava are not the same pests and diseases that attack uh, a yam. All right. So if you have yam growing on this same on this land piece of land this year and the following year you grow uh, uh, um, cassava, if the pests attack yam, they will not attack cassava because the pests are also host specific. I hope you get that. So um, 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 if you don't eat granite, then you cannot affect granite in any way if you are a pest. That's what that means. Then of course, it helps to utilize, uh, 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 
soil nutrients to the maximum. How is that? Because look, cassava may need only a specific amount or a specific type and amount of soil nutrients, right? Now, <clears throat> if you remove the cassava, then there are some other nutrients over there that the yam also needs. But if you don't grow the yam, those nutrients will remain locked up in the soil. So it's very important with the crop rotation so that um, um, the nutrients in the soil are maximally utilized. I hope you understand that. Okay, now what are the disadvantages of this? In fact, there is only one known disadvantage. It is the difficulty with uh, the skills required for this, pro uh, for this program. Now, if you are not very skillful, you don't know which one to grow at which time, you will lose it, you will mess up, and you will not get uh, um, the, the intended uh, uh, result. Now, why is it important to include um, legumes such as groundnuts, cowpea, uh, soya beans, and in fact, all types of beans? Why is it important to uh, include them in the crop rotation program? Because they help to control soil erosion and weeds when used as cover crops. I mentioned that to you earlier on because they're able to bind the soil uh, surface together and improve on the structure of the soil. Then they also improve nitrogen in the soil by fixing the nitrogen in the air into the soil. Maybe as time goes on, we will learn nitrogen fixation and you'll get to understand this better. Then of course, if they increase soil fertility and they improve the soil structure. I hope, I hope you are clear with that. Let's move on and look at um, monocropping. Now, monocropping is a, pro is a system of farming in which um, um, only one type of annual crop is, is cultivated on a piece of land at a time. Only one type of annual crop per season. So if we have, now we are in the rainy season, if you go to most farms in whole, you will see only maize on the farm. So that is monocropping, only maize, monocropping. Maybe you go to another location, you will see only tomatoes. You will see, you may see only okra. You may see only onions, or you may see only tomato, um, um, any other crop, but only one of it on the same piece of land per time. That is monocropping, monocropping. So maybe after this season, on that piece of land, there may be another crop, but it is only that other crop. They are not more than one. It's only one at a time. That is mono cropping. In any case, mono means one, all right? So what are the advantages of this process? Okay, pests and diseases are controlled easily because there's only one type of crop on the farm. So if we have maize, for instance, in the picture I show you, if there's any disease attack or outbreak on this farm, it will be easy to control because after all, we have only one type of crop. And so if we have, if we, if we, if we, um, um, if we detect that there's any problem, it is easy to control. Now the land is efficiently utilized because it is only one type of crop that we are growing. And we should, because, It is only one type of crop we are growing. Who is the... Please mute yourselves. Somebody is making noise over there. Who is that? Mute yourselves. Now, let me continue. Because there is only one particular, particular type of crop at a time, all the nutrients in the soil that that particular plant will require for growth will be utilized. And that's how we say that the land is efficiently utilized. Now, inventory is made for only that particular crop. So if we are, for instance, cultivating maize, we only go and buy fertilizers that are good for maize. We will buy uh, um, um, 
weedicides that are good for maize. We will buy insecticides that are good for maize. We will buy boosters that are good for maize. Or if you can buy, even, even the fertilizer, uh, some of the weedicides we have today are selective. So we we'll buy only selective weedicides for maize. All right? So that is the inventory made for that particular uh, uh, crop. Now, of course, skills are obtained from this practice. If you're doing the same thing over and over, you become the master of it. So you master it. If you master maize production, then anything about maize production, you can handle. All right? If you're doing the same thing over and over, you would agree with me that you become the boss of it. Right? So the same thing happens with monocropping as well. And that is good for the farmer. If he knows everything or at least everything about the particular crop that he is growing. Now, what is the disadvantage? And this happens a lot. If you go to farming communities that practice monocropping, every farmer in that community grows the same type of crop and the harvests are ready at the same time. What happens is that there is high risk when the price of the crop falls at the market, or even if the market is not ready to absorb the uh, crops altogether. So you see, sometimes, sometime in the year, uh, uh, tomatoes become so common because the market is not ready. There's no ready market to absorb the tomato product. Then at some other time, just a few weeks ago or so, uh, uh, watermelon was so common on the market because uh, the thing is there people are not buying because everybody in the farming uh, watermelon growing areas have grown watermelon so it, it's a high risk uh, 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 farming especially when the market is not ready to absorb the product i hope you understand that let's go on and look at pastoral farming pastoral farming now in pastoral farming only animals are raised on large scale on large scale bear in mind it must be on large scale if you have uh, uh, um, about five five koklo or uh, uh, fowls at home we don't we will not you don't qualify to be to be a pastoral farmer if you have only uh, two goats or three sheep at home you are not doing a pastoral farming. For pastoral farming, it must be on a large scale. The animals that are raised include cattle, sheep, and goats. And these group of, uh, this group of animals are called ruminants. And uh, we have poultry, we have pigs, and rabbits. And these, this group is also called non-ruminants, okay? Now, animals that are kept on a farm or animals that are raised are uh, together called livestock. Livestock. And normally, the primary reason for keeping animals or rearing animals is to obtain meat, egg, and sometimes the skin, even though there are some other uh, importance or uses of uh, uh, animal or animal products that there are. All right, so you can see from this picture a huge head of cattle, a cattle ranch over here. Now, what are the advantages of pastoral farming? Now, the animals provide us with a rich source of protein. They uh, also serve as a rich source of organic fertilizer for crop production. Then they also serve as a rich source of raw materials for various industries. So the skin, you can use the skin to make belts, to make bag, to make shoes, and so on and so forth. Um, so that's also that for that industry. You can use the milk for milk industry. Uh, the meat over there, we have a lot of meat products out there. All right. So what are the disadvantages of this system of farming too? The animals would destroy people's farm, uh, people's crop farms if they are not well taken care of. And I hope that you will not want to uh, challenge that anyway. Then, of course, 
it is difficult to identify which disease attacks the animals when they are sick look if the animals are sick we don't we are not able to tell readily what is wrong with the animal because we cannot communicate with them so it, it means that um we need a lot of expertise to be able to tell which diseases are uh, are disturbing the animal and even how to control or help the animal to become well all right now listen to this one carefully because um um <clears throat> A lot of your, a lot of students have room with stating this point. Feeding them continuously at the same location on the same feed is what we call overgrazing. And overgrazing leads to soil depletion. All right? Overgrazing is caused by huge herds of animals and overgrazing causes soil resource depletion or soil erosion all right okay let's continue shall we now let's look at mixed cropping in this system of farming the farmer grows two or more different types of crops on the same piece of land at the same time and continues year after year year after year so in the picture i show you you can see coconut plants over there you can see palm plants over there this is tomatoes right in, with the red colors then we have sunflower then we have cauliflower over here too so on the same piece of land all these crops are growing at the same time and it continues year after year every season these different types of crops are grown on the same piece of land. I hope that you will not uh, um, confuse mixed cropping with mixed farming. Please unmute yourselves. You are giving me some terrible feedbacks. Unmute no, yourself. Okay. No. Okay. All right. Let's continue, shall we? What is the advantage of growing a lot of crops on your farm at a time? The farmer can select crops that will improve soil fertility. So you know that uh, 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 leguminous crops such as beans, and the uh, cowpea will improve soil fertility. So you have that at your disposal to do. You can, you can select them. So the dense canopy of crops protects the soil against erosion. In this picture you see, you see that the leaves of the crops uh, almost cover the surface of the soil, all right? Now that to prevent the sun rays from directly hitting the, so uh, the surface of the soil, thereby preventing what we call soil erosion, and of course, preventing loss of soil water. All right, I hope you understand that. Then of course, the farmer obtains a variety of crops from the farm at a time. If you are a farmer and you practice mixed cropping, you are not likely to go hungry any time in the year. Because if you need tomatoes, you can get on your farm. If you need pepper, you will get it. If you want some fruits such as mangoes, you will get. You can even see in the picture I have the um, 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 pl plantain or banana uh, uh, plants also over there. So anytime you want some uh, afternoon ampeci, you can still get some to eat over there. Some of these leaves can be used as um, green leafy vegetables for your vegetables too. All right, and so on and so forth. So the farmer will never go hungry any time in the year. Again, the farmer gets a balanced diet. Yes, that's just by the way. And the nutrients in the soil are utilized because I told you, I told you earlier on that every plant 
has its own nutrient requirements. All right. So if I have, if, if I am plant A and I need uh, A nutrients, there's plant B that also needs uh, B nutrients. And all these nutrients are in the soil at a time. So if you have plant A and plant B growing, then you are utilizing the nutrients that the soil has at the same time. And that is good. Then of course, um, the spread of disease is checked and can be prevented easily. You know why? Because two different crops are on the same piece of land, but they are not attacked by the same diseases and pests. All right. So if you have an outbreak of disease that attacks maize, and you have maize and uh, uh, maize and cassava on your farm, then you know that your cassava will be safe and intact. If you use the same land to grow only maize, then you know that you have a problem. You have you have all your investments for the season destroyed or going down the, the, the drain. I hope you get that. If that is the case, then what are the disadvantages? Now, because a lot of crops are grown on the same land at the same time, the soil nutrients are used faster. I hope you agree with me. Then there is competition between crops for nutrients because the crops are different. Yes, there is competition because the nutrients we have the nutrients in the soil may not be sufficient enough to cater for everybody's needs every crop's needs so and here there is competition everybody or in this case in this sense the plant would have to survive so they develop means and ways that will enable them to survive to you know to utilize the nutrients that the soil has okay let's move on to another system called monoculture. Please don't confuse this with mono, mono cropping. In monoculture, the farmer grows one type of annual crop or raise one type of animal on the same piece of land every year. All right? So if you go to the monoculture farmer you see either only maize every year or you see only cattle every year that's the only thing he's doing on that same piece of land season after season he doesn't change from maize to millet no he doesn't change from cattle to goats no it is always either an either one particular type of animal or one particular type of crop throughout the year. So of course, the crops over here, the cultural practices are easily carried out because of course you know them because you have been doing that over and over. The farmer selects suitable implements. So um, whatever you need for cattle production, you buy it and that is all. You don't go and buy something that you not need for cattle production. All right, so the inventory too are selected and uh, 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 bought for the particular crop or animal. Then the crops are easily produced on large scale because you have been doing this over and over, even from the picture I show you over here. It's a large scale production. All right. Now, what are the disadvantages? Because it's the same and only type of crop or animal, if there is a disease outbreak, everybody or every every plant or every crop or livestock will be uh, affected and then the farmer will always use dangerous means to control erosion <clears throat> how is that because it's the same thing you are doing over and over and there is no um there is no change okay you are likely to start using fertilizers if are chemical fertilizers that have adverse uh, impacts on the environment, or you use some other uh, um, um, indiscriminate ways that will affect the soil's structure, thereby leading to erosion. Let's look at ecological farming. Now, in ecological farming, um, the vegetation of the environment is not tampered with, it's not destroyed, but it is rather protected. 
all right so it's a type of farming that's that's that provides optimum environment uh, uh, like optimum um requirements to the plant Sir. without affecting Sir. yes who is calling Sir. yes Richard, is that Richard? Shall we continue? All right. So over here, we are providing all the um, requirements needed for the plant's growth without affecting the environment without destroying the environment. So in the picture I give you, this is what we call greenhouse farming. All right, so the amount of sunlight needed, the amount of carbon, uh, carbon dioxide, the amount of soil nutrients are all provided within this enclosed system. Nothing is, there's no plowing, there's no felling of trees, there's no uh, 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 weed, weed control, because even the weeds are not made to grow over here. There is no pest control because they are not allowed to come in the greenhouse effect, uh, greenhouse farming. All right. Another sure way of ecological farming is using what we call the sack farming. So you grow your crops in sacks. All right. Change my things, no deal here. All right, so <clears throat> that is that about ecological farming. The environment is not tampered with in any way, but rather we work at protecting the environment. What are the advantages? In fact, this one has no known disadvantage except that it is expensive to do. That's the only disadvantage, it is expensive to do. However, it helps to reduce environmental degradation, it reduces pests and their attack on crops it helps to reduce soil erosion it helps to reduce environmental pollution it helps to improve the climate and environment and of course bear in mind that it helps to produce wholesome crops all right crops that have not been tampered with by any insects or pests whatsoever all right so that is that about ecological farming. Let's go to the next one. And that is cash crop farming. Now, cash crop farming is also called commercial farming or cash cropping. This is the system of farming in which agricultural crops are grown for the purpose of sale or solely to make profits instead of for sustenance or for butter. So over here, whatever we do on the farm, it is so that we make profit. It is not so that we, we, uh, uh, we feed ourselves keke. So in Ghana, our president has, uh, has, has brought this policy of planting for food and jobs. All right? Planting for food and jobs. So everything on the farm or everything they do on the farm is to provide food that will be utilized by ourselves and then we sell the surplus for income. So that's cash crop farming. So basically everything is about making money. Everything is about making money from the farm. All right. So some of the cash crops we know are cocoa, coffee, oranges, mangoes, tomatoes, agri um, um, watermelon and so on and so forth every crop that is grown basically to make profit is a cash crop it may be annual perennial or biennial any of them all right as long as it is being grown for profit it is a cash crop i hope you understand that okay what are the advantages of this system of farming it is profitable to the farmer and serves as a source of, 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 of income or livelihood. It serves as a source of livelihood. 
it gives employment where cash crops can be processed and it also promotes economic diversification so we in ghana are one of the leading producers of cocoa now cocoa becomes more profitable to us if we are able to process the cocoa into cocoa products including cocoa powder pomade chocolate and so on and so forth so once we are able to process our products the cocoa into finished goods then we are creating jobs okay for people along what we call the uh, uh, um, the economic chain all right so it's not only the farmer but in the end there's somebody who carries the uh, who who transports the cocoa uh, seeds or cocoa yeah the cocoa seeds to the chocolate factory there's uh, there are factory hands at the chocolate factory there are uh, um, people who package the chocolate there are people who transport the package before somebody also goes to buy at a wholesale price and goes to retail and also along the, the the chain are a lot of people who are benefiting from the same cash crop or from only one cash crop which in this example is the cocoa i hope you understand that then of course it generates revenue for government it generates revenue for the government so you know that cocoa is a major major contributor to the nation's a gross domestic product the gdp very very important cocoa coffee and some vegetables so they are very important to our economy okay what is the disadvantage of cash crop farming cash crop farming is only beneficial if you have a lot of money to start big because it has to do with a lot of inputs a lot of income a lot of laborers a lot of uh, chemicals a lot of even land space all right so if you don't have a lot of money you cannot go into into cash crop farming and then that's why in ghana you see that the uh, success, successive governments have made policies to help cocoa growing communities some people have provided cocoa seedlings some people have supplied cocoa fertilizer. Some people have supplied uh, 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 ready markets to absorb the cocoa products when they are ready, and so on and so forth. Because the farmer cannot do all this alone, so there is the need for government interventions. And successive governments have done or are doing are doing a lot to support cocoa growing communities. I don't know if you have ever heard about cocoa roads. If you've heard about a uh, uh, cocoa uh, cocoa board and cocoa board scholarships and so on and so forth, these are all incentives that um, 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 encourage the growing of the product because it is the bedrock or the backbone of Ghana's economy. Let's move on and look at the next one, which is organic farming. Now, in organic farming. The crops and animals are produced without the use of any chemicals. All right. We don't use chemicals in organic farming. You don't, you don't use, uh, so you know that, okay, we don't use chemicals. There is no genetic modification. We don't use, no, genetic modification means that we are tampering with the normal genome of the organisms to suit us so that we will we, 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 uh, get some type, sort of products i don't know if you've ever heard about genetically modified uh, uh, um, organisms gmos that's what some countries in europe have subscribed to they they, 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 they we call something genetic engineering so they engineer the genome of some crops and animals to produce certain varieties, certain breeds, and so on and so forth. But that is not done here in organic farming. In organic farming, we are dealing with um, just growing the crop the way it is without necessarily tampering with uh, uh, its genetic makeup. Let it just be like that. All right. 
So it, it, it became necessary for us to use uh, uh, organic farming um, in response to the ever-changing uh, farming practices and climatic conditions, all right? Because every, every now and then the climate is changing, every now and then people's behaviors are changing and a demand for certain uh, products, all right? So it's important for us to, you know, readjust our cultural agricultural systems. And that, that's how come we come with this um, agri uh, organic farming. Now, bear in mind that the products coming from organic farms are 100% intact with their nutrients. The nutrients are not modified, they are not tampered with, they are just 100% intact. But they come very, they are very, they are quite expensive. They are more expensive than the, the normal ones that we grow on the farm using chemicals. All right. Now, organic farming is scientifically, it is backed by scientific research and best farming practices. All right. So, farm, hy farm hygiene is, uh, 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 is, is, is observed in all organic farms across the country, all right? And it is, you, you, instead of using weedy size, we use, like you go and, and, and hand pick the weeds in the farm, or you weed with a hoe or cutlass, you know. And then instead of chemical fertilizers, if you want to apply fertilizers to the farm, you use organic fertilizers such as cow, uh, cattle dropping and, uh, poultry droppings and so on and so forth all right so that's that about organic farming um and that will end our lesson for today however i wanted to put this this down um before we meet the next time you should be able to give me the definition for intensive farming 